Hello and welcome back to the Woodlander channel and the HDPE boat project. Uh, it's been a little while and hopefully I can start answering some questions that a lot of you had over the comments section. All right, after a long winter of doing no work on this boat, I'm finally getting back into it. Uh, I'm going to try to um, get some good videos of the actual process of welding and kind of show what I'm doing so hopefully somebody else might be able to do something similar as well so I'm going to uh, get cracking on that okay so first of all I need to uh, clean the surface just using uh, isopropyl so that it dries real quick try and get all of the um, any dirt and, and debris out of uh, the weld so this is where I left off um, in the fall and these aren't the prettiest welds <laughs> this is the first time i've been doing this so um this has to get um at least one or two more passes over these welds yet but i pretty well got the skin all um stitched together and put together on the outside i haven't touched the inside yet so we'll uh do a bit of cleaning here uh, the other thing is i've got these rods <laughs> so i bought these ones on amazon um you can they're they're not cheap though like you you get 50 for like 30 bucks it's not cheap um especially the amount of welding i'm doing here so what i've done is taken the quarter inch um, skin material and cut strips and these actually work really really well for when you're doing the the big bead and laying big welds um, the small ones here are really good for the initial stitching together um, mainly because this thin material warps a tremendous amount once it gets hot and so um, you the, the smaller rods melt faster and easier and so it's good for sticking it together initially but once you get a, a, a bead and got it stuck together so it can't warp anymore then the big ones just get laid in and uh, they feel a lot better so i'm going to set my camera up and hopefully uh get you some good shots of of the actual welding process all right so first i gotta i've already cleaned this once but i was using a paper towel and paper towel was leaving um, debris behind itself so a little bit of isopropyl so that it dries off real quick make sure we get all the dirt and debris out of there this weld here specifically was a bit of a nightmare when i started it so now i've got to make sure that it gets filled in um, so we're going to do that now Okay, so I'm using a heat gun with a special tip for actually doing this welding. I bought that on Amazon as well. So this is the three tip set that I got off of Amazon. I think it was like 35 bucks Canadian. And yeah, it has all these different tips for doing various different things. Basically, you heat both the surface and the rod at the same time and then as they start to turn molten you just start laying the uh the rod in so here we go
All right, there it goes. Starting to melt there now. So I'm pressing the rod into the parent material with a certain amount of pressure and then as it melts you're kind of pressing the plastic in very much very much like welding steel uh, very similar but it is it is different in the way the material reacts So I'm trying really hard to get both the rod and the parent material molten. If the camera was a little bit closer, I'll try to get it on the next shot. You'd see the molten plastic at the tip of my rod. Okay, hopefully I can get a good shot of what it looks like up close when you're making a, a weld. Okay, you'll see right at the tip of the heat gun and the base of the rod, the molten plastic. Now, looking for molten plastic both on the parent material as well as the rod. And then you just press that rod into the parent material, kind of pushing that bead of, of molten uh, plastic uh, along the weld and just kind of, very, again, very similar to steel welding. Um, TIG welding, that sort of thing, um, but it's not quite exactly the same. The, the materials do react differently, but the idea behind it is, is very similar. Well, I had a lot of people commenting on the first video about ways to fuse uh, HDP, and I was told a lot about extrusion welders, which I did consider when I started this. However, an extrusion welder is thousand dollars and uh, for a little pet project like this I wasn't really going to spending two grand on a tool I was going to 
potentially only used for one project. So I wanted to learn some things here first. And so I did the manual method like this, which you can buy the proper guns and, and all of that. But uh, I bought this heat gun for super cheap and just bought the tips for it, which are exactly the same thing as the, the Leaster uh, fusing machines. Trust me, I did my research on amount of uh, wattage that, and, and heat that these guns put out and, and the tips required. And um, I also uh, watched a ton of videos as well on um, on tacking where yes somebody had commented about just using the right tip to melt the two pieces together without a rod to tack it. Um, which I did do some of. Uh, I just uh, found that certain things were working better than others so I just carried on with what I was doing and somebody else had commented about the special tips where you feed the rod through the tip um, and it works in a very similar fashion as this there's a lot of different ways and if you do your research on it you can see that there's a lot of different ways of going about this I do have the tip where you feed the rod through the tip I just found I had way more control in monitoring the um, the beads and, and penetration uh, when I was doing it this way. And there was other comments about the pipe fuses and the butt fusion that was done. Um, I am aware it was not perfect. I have fused pipe of this sort with a fusing machine proper in the past. And um, I do know how I was trained and certified to fuse pipe. That's how I have most of my knowledge in doing this in the first place but I want everybody to understand that all those weird angles at the bow were very very difficult one to miter two to fuse because of the angles where typical butt fusion is straight on end to end square cuts and the faces were cleaned up as best that we could uh, however using a chainsaw to cut it was not the smoothest cuts so we had to find methods to smooth the faces like putting them on a heat plate to melt the face and make it square just before we did the actual fusing. Okay, so I'm just about to start on the inside now that I've got all the seams on the outside welded. Um, but this is brand new HDP material. You can see like it's super reflective. So before I actually start welding this stuff, I gotta take this scraper and just score the material to take the oxidation off of the uh, outside. I'll do that on all sides here. That's it, and then we'll start welding. All right, so hopefully you guys got a little bit more information and uh, some, some more enjoyment out of that short little video about uh, the actual welding process and, and the fusing that I've been doing. I understand it's not perfect. Um, this was an R&D boat, this first one. Hopefully the second one, I'll, I'll take all the lessons I've learned from this one and make all the improvements that I need to. I definitely take any uh, suggestions in the comments to heart and and uh and listen to what people have to say i guess we're gonna see how this one turns out who knows maybe once we put it in the water it falls apart and i will have learned a massive lesson but it's been fun up until this point and i'm i'm back into the swing of things now so uh let's just see how it goes and keep watching yeah so i mean this was a pretty short video it was mainly just about the welding but to be honest that's really what i've been doing for the last little bit is just laying beads and trying to stick it all together everything was kind of fabbed and in that first video when tacked together and now it's just monotonously welding welding more welding so uh i will put out another video here hopefully soon um i just don't want to bore people but if you like this video and you like the last video and you want to see some more like subscribe and uh, I'm getting a lot of people subscribing and a lot of people liking, a lot of views. Uh, it seems pretty popular. So like, subscribe, and share.